Hello and welcome back. Amber here and today I'm going to talk about the highlights of episode 6, Eyes Without Pity. And I do think this is a very strong episode. We have characters finding their way back to one another in Kyrian, and it's almost uplifting, but it's also paired with incredible challenges. In an attempt to not make a 10 minute video repeating different variations on why the Shanshen are terrible, I'm going to gloss over most of the torture scenes today. It's here, it happened, and the real takeaway I have from that is Madeline Madden, who plays Egwene, gave such a gut-wrenching performance this episode, and to be blunt, it was very hard to watch. The Shanchen are depraved. Their use of psychological and physical torture is inhumane. It's uncomfortable, and it's supposed to be uncomfortable. This is a plotline from the books that I've always struggled to read. It's one thing reading it, but seeing it adapted to television is so much more brutal. It's hard to really extrapolate my thoughts because all I can say is Shan Chen bad. I do have a Shan Chen video about their history in my playlists, and I'll link it at the end of the episode if anyone wants to check it out. All in all, I want justice for Egwene, and maybe justice is the wrong word here. I think I want vengeance. As we drift back into Teleron Riod, Lanfear has managed to successfully drive a wedge between Rand and Moraine. It successfully pulls in a storyline from the books. Rand is afraid of becoming a puppet of the Aes Sedai, and it's a perfect card for Lanfear to play to get him alone and without allies. Back in Falm, Elaine and Nynaeve come clean to Rima about the Black Aja, and this is a big deal. I said I don't generally believe that this could be true, that Dark Friends could invade the White Tower. The institution is almost infallible in their eyes, so taking in this information is usually a lot for one of them to handle. It speaks volumes about Rima's character. She is trusting. I think she's seen too much in Falm that has opened her eyes. She's probably the last Aes Sedai within the city that hasn't been killed or captured. She could be the only one left to send intel back to the tower, which poses another problem. Without sources on the ground, the White Tower won't know just how bad things are. All that's left will be the spread of rumors. We then head back to Tarvalin, and Leandrin is comforting her dying son and is caught unaware by Lanfear. Lanfear manipulates Leandrin, asking why she would take orders from a Shamael, a man, then kills her child in an attempt to free her from her burden, or most likely just to break her down into submission. The question is, after this, whose side will Leandrin take, a Shamael or Lanfear? Or will she try and cut ties to the shadow altogether? Back in Falm, we move to Loyal as he's working as a server for Lady Suroth as she takes a leisurely day off of slaving and being horrible. This scene really upset me. Loyal is forced to perform like a trained monkey. As an Ogier, he is gifted in the rare talent of tree singing, where he can stimulate plants into growing. Loyal's tree singing is beautiful and uplifting. He reserves it for special occasions, but the Shanshan force him to do it as a parlor trick. While everyone laughs at him, it's super degrading. No one can get a win this episode, except for maybe Barthanis, who wins the award of best little sandwich maker this side of the Dragon Wall. I will relish in the sandwich moment of happiness because this episode is dark. Loyal and Ingtar discover the location of the Horn of Valir and have also found where Egwene is being held captive. We then return to Kyrian. Ishamael wants Min to bring Rand and Matt together so that Matt can kill him like he does in her vision. In an undisclosed location, Lan, Alana, and her warders stop at a temple to the Forsaken. They think Lan might be a dark friend, but he finally tells the truth he needs to get word to the Amerlin that he and Moraine have found the Dragon Reborn. Now, this is an interesting point. I'm not saying Alana can or can't be trusted, but a secret like this is dangerous. The more people who know, the more chances the secret gets out, which would put Rand in danger. Also, 
we now know that the Black Aja exists, so this could potentially put every Aes Sedai who knows about Rand in harm's way. Moving back to Kyrian, Ishamael infiltrates Rand's dreams, but Lanfear intercepts him. To get Rand to trust her, she offers him a gift of entering someone's dream. He chooses Egwene, but before he can say anything or touch her, Lanfear rips him out. Rand tells her he will do anything to save her, which she doesn't seem happy to hear. In Falm, Rima tries to send Nynaeve and Elaine back to the tower to warn them about the Black Aja, but they are resolute. They won't leave without Egwene. This moment is really great because it marks the beginning of Nynaeve and Elaine's relationship. In Kyrian, Moraine struggles to write a letter to Swan, informing her that she has been stilled. Barthanis interrupts with a tasty sandwich, but Moraine sends him away, invoking the anger of her sister. When their father was dying, Moraine didn't come home to say goodbye. She was too busy trying to find the Dragon Reborn and save the world. But Moraine can't just tell her sister that. Again, this secret is dangerous. Anyone who knows Rand exists would be put in danger. This secret has cost Moraine a lot. If we end up getting a flashback to her younger days with Swan Sanche, perhaps this will be explored further in the show. But Moraine has one goal, one singular focus. Find Rand, save the world. Now we move to the point of view of Swan Sanche, and it's really good to see her face again. She has received the letter, it appears her coach is coming under attack, and she makes a booby trap with the one power. For a second, it resembles a crown, and then the points turn outward in dozens of sharp projectiles. I really love this moment. The imagery is equal parts beautiful and deadly. I love that the show is coming up with interesting ways of using the one power that isn't just throwing lightning and fire around. Anyways, instead of an ambush, it's Lan coming to tell her about Moraine. We then move to the sanitarium, and Rand tries to get Loghain to teach him to channel again. This is my only minor criticism of the episode. Loghain is like, okay, I'll teach you now, and it feels a bit too easy. We are coming up on the end of the season, so it had to happen fast. Rand then wrestles with Sidene and draws in way too much. The taint on Sidene makes him puke because Sidene is poisoned by the Dark One. Loghain believes Rand is so strong a channeler that refinement doesn't matter. I'm curious what people think. Will this be enough? Can Rand do what he needs to do knowing only this? Or will we have more lessons with Loghain? Next, in a rare moment of happiness this episode, Rand and Matt are reunited. In Falm, we return to Rima as she holds the item or collar. We learn a few things. The Shanchen intend on conquering the whole continent in the name of their empress. Two sisters have been killed. The sitter of the Blue Aja was collared and made a slave. The item is a Tarangriol, an object made with the one power. It has no opening. The most exciting thing about this exchange of information is that Rima also mentions that the Shanchen have strange beasts and channelers kept as slaves, which makes me cautiously optimistic that we could see some of the Shanchen animals before the season is over. They are otherworldly and prehistoric looking, and if they show up, I'll be very excited. In Kyrian, Rand explains to Matt, how he had to play dead to protect everyone. Ishamael has Egwene, Rand knows it's bait, but he has to try something. Matt promised to meet Rand at the gate in an hour and they will set out together. And it's really nice to see Matt again. Finally, he's back and his japes and lightheartedness was really needed this episode. One of my favorite moments of this episode is where Matt does a little fist bump and whispers, Dragon Reborn! To Rand, I'd love to know if this was ad-libbed or written into the episode because the comedic timing is perfect. This whole scene was so nice, but then the show turns everything back on its head and we return to more doom and gloom as Matt confronts Min, learning the truth about why she brought him here. 
Moving to Moraine and the Omerlin seat has arrived with 14 Aes Sedai demanding an audience. And this is exciting. We know there's a wedding about to happen. We know Lanfear and Ashamael are loose. Ran can hold on to the one power. If there is a battle within Kyrian, we now have Aes Sedai and warders who can fight for the side of the light. I am really curious as to what's going to happen in the next episode. We also have a lot of major players all in one location. Baron, Alana, Leandrin, Swan, and Moraine. Things are about to get wild. We then move back to Rand as Matt hides from him. Rand will make his journey alone, but is intercepted by Lan and Alana. In Falm, Rima and Elaine try to find out more about the item, and something very interesting happens. Rima gives Nynaeve very good advice that allows her to channel again. It's the same as when a patient comes to you. You don't have to decide to help. You just help them. This is the first time Nynaeve is able to channel since her lesson with Leandrin. Nynaeve, being a healer, senses what the item feels. It needs to be healed, and the way it feels whole is by putting it on a woman. I do like this moment because we are getting more background on Terangrial. Some of these items have been lost for so long that Aes Sedai no longer know how they work or what their purpose is, but this is also dangerous work. Some of these items can be deadly. Tinkering with them is dangerous. Because Nynaeve is a healer through and through, she almost delves into it like she would a sick patient, feeling for what it needs. But before we get any more information, the Shanchen have closed in, feeling someone channeling inside. Rima then hands over her rings, resolute in the fact that she's probably going to die, calling Nynaeve sister. She then meets the Shanchen in the streets, and again we get another interesting display of the One Power as Rima uses weaves to bend one of the Soldom's body in on itself. But her warder is killed and she is collared when Nynaeve and Elaine can do nothing but watch in terror. At the same time, Egwene is hung by her collar and eventually succumbs to the torment of her captor, pouring water for her. The use of water for a metaphor for channeling is used a lot in the television series. And in this scene, Egwene is relinquishing her ability to channel to a slaver. She pours the water, her source of power, into another woman's cup. What an episode. There's a moment at the very end where Elaine covers Nynaeve's mouth as she cries, and they hold hands while they stand in silence watching Rima get collared. This broke me. In the last seconds of the episode, we see Megan, the sitter of the Blue Aja, telling Egwene not to cry. I don't even know where to start with this episode. I purposely left out so much because watching Egwene getting beaten over and over again felt masochistic. For every person complaining that the show is trying to be darker than the books, I find it interesting because the series can be very dark. I think depending on the age and maturity of when someone reads this series, some of these grim aspects can fly over the head of the reader. It's not always detailed out in painstaking graphic nature, but it's definitely there. The torture of Egwene is one of those moments where the show pretty much gave us exactly what happens on page. It's not fun to watch, but it makes a lasting impact. I can guarantee that this will be the hardest episode for me to talk about this season. All I can say is Egwene is a fighter. This is something that will either break her or propel her forward. It also gives insight into her relationship with Nynaeve and Elaine. They are risking the same fate by staying within the city. Their bonds of sisterhood are so strong, and it's one of the themes within the Wheel of Time that is really cherished. It's not always sunshine and rainbows, but the female characters within this story are just as brave and fearless as anyone else, Despite how emotional and awful some of these scenes were this episode, I think that something that comes through. These women are going to do whatever it takes to survive and pull their friend out of the clutches of depraved evil. 
On a different note, I did notice that Perrin sat on the sidelines this episode, so I assume next week we will see him arrive in fall with Avienda. That means just about every character will be either there or in Kyrian. With only two episodes left, I'm really excited, but also sad to see the season rounding up to its end. I'm hoping for a wild finale to the season, hopefully a massive battle at Falm, a prison heist, maybe a heist for the horn, a couple exotic Shanshan creatures, and a couple more reunions. I've been having an absolute blast this season, and if you like these types of episodes, let me know by liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching, and I will see you back next time.